Oh my god, I'm finally doing this. I'm finally doing this. It's finally here. It's finally happening. It's been a long. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. But I know T's gonna record this video. Oh yes, she will. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl T, and this is. <sighs> Hey y'all, so the reality is I recorded this 35 million times and this is the 36th time and after this time I'm done, okay? I'm just going to say what is on my heart and I'm going to be done. What's good? People, this is one of them accountability heart checks type things that me and God have been processing through. And I feel like I'm not the only one. So we're just going to get right into it, right? I feel like some of us may be in a season of waiting like maybe you're waiting on an opportunity maybe you're waiting on god to send you your man your man your man maybe you're waiting on a career shift maybe you're waiting on god to give you an uh an opening on how to start your business right whatever it is i feel like a lot of us are waiting on god for something and this is spicy i'm not gonna hold you this is this is an accountability heart posture check but i was sitting like one day just chilling like in my bed um and one day when i'm not thinking about this at all uh the holy spirit like he whispered to me tiana what if i'm already waiting on you what if i'm waiting on you like, whoa like what does that even mean right and i will tell you one thing that i've learned in my journey with god is that when god offers you a question wants a question back in return right the scripture is that the glory of god is to conceal a matter but the glory of kings is to search them out and so when god puts a question on your heart he wants you to respond with another question it means that you're thinking about what it is that he said to you and so i'm like okay well first of all what does waiting mean was the first question i got this image and god was like a lot of us are on some waiting on god this is our posture like i waited on god to send me a husband i waited on god to send me a new opportunity i waited on god to send me a business plan i'm waiting on god i'm waiting on god i'm waiting on god and god was like when he said what if i'm already waiting on you this is the image that i got in my head what if i'm already waiting on you like waiting is taking up the posture of a servant and God said, what if I, God, the God of the universe, am already waiting on you, serving you, okay? You're waiting on me. I'm waiting on you to move because I'm already waiting on you, right? And it really did. It ate me up. Honestly, that alone just ate me up. And so I said, okay, oof, <laughs> we getting spicy, Lord, okay. And I was like, okay, what if you're already waiting on me? And I did take some time to consider, like, wow maybe the place that god put me in is serving the thing that i'm asking him for like it was one of those like oh wake up like grow up type of uh revelations type of note to self okay i had this duality of what it means to wait right and so our definition and like how we see waiting is like expecting on something to happen expecting for something to happen like and there's another definition and that is serving okay someone taking up the posture of a servant and there's a common scripture in the bible it's in james 2 okay uh james 2:17, uh to be exact okay i'm gonna pull it up and it reads honey okay i'm gonna give you some time to go open up your bible go see your bible actually let's crack open the word a little bit okay this ain't heavy version in the same way faith by itself if it is not accomplished by action is dead and that ate to me okay and it ate me up actually okay and it's the thing that we always say faith without works is dead faith without works is dead conversation of waiting it was translated in my mind in this way waiting without waiting is dead like waiting without waiting is dead and that if that didn't grow me up honey 
and I, that's why this is the note to self journey because we are in the real world we're on the journey okay we're walking the path along the way and i'm sharing you as we're on the journey okay i said oh, waiting without waiting is dead oof that's a big girl one that's a big one grow up okay and so i asked another question the first question is okay what does waiting mean the second question is well how do i wait well then how do I actually wait? What does the posture of waiting look like? And the Lord has revealed to me what that can look like um, or what that does look like. And I want to go to some scripture and I want to share the things that God has been dealing with me in my heart. And tell you that these are things that are going to challenge us. They're not things that are going to it's not like oh you wait like this and it's going to come out the sky like this is not that that is not this honey okay if we on the journey to become a child if we put seed in the ground and there's water in the soil this is how you water the seed all right this is that all right and it takes some time for things to grow and so this isn't just like a oh you do this and boom magically your man come out the sky honey because my man's still in here so these are things that i'm learning in the journey and these are things that god has revealed to me in my heart um, as I'm walking along the journey of becoming so when God said what if I'm waiting on you what he was saying is what if I'm already serving you what if I've already served you and it made me think about the common scripture that we all know okay let's go back to our Bibles it's printed on the February 21 bag child it was printed on there okay I could show I think I could show evidence I'm gonna pull a picture up but uh John 3 16 for God so loved the world honey it say right here in the word for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whomsoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Um, and so giving is what? An act of service. Oof, we can stop there. Sometimes like when we're expecting God to do something in our lives, it makes us miss the things that he's already done. And that's something that has really eaten me up. The first thing is to serve. God has already served you. He gave his only son. Like Jesus literally died on the cross for you to have this conversation that you're having with yourself right now of like, being selfish, to be expecting something in return without even just accrediting or being thankful or grateful for God's service to you. And I hope that you guys look for some ways to serve in your life. The biggest example that I like see is like relationships a lot of us are like waiting on a relationship but we're not considering the fact that relationship is service like we're like oh I want this person to do this for me or I want to have this you know like the girly pops the girls the girlies we want princess treatment all the things which I'm here for it because same but I think sometimes like collectively all of us as humans okay we are oftentimes considering who someone will be to us but not considering who we are going to be for someone um and that's a part of service like relationship successful relationship at least is serving the person that you love um and so if you're in a season of waiting i ultimately want to let you know that taking up a posture of service um, is really near and dear to God's heart and also a posture of gratitude too of like okay what ways is God already serving me and if I don't know those ways and like I'm clearly blind I can't see you know like if I'm blind then like asking the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit show me the the ways in which you are serving me in this season I give you thanks and I give you gratitude for serving me and show me how your your hand is moving in my life um, and so the first part of this note to self, because this one is going to be a little longer, is service. How do you wait well? You serve. Okay. The second thing that God had put on my heart and the conversation of how do you wait, wait well is to sow. God is like, you got, this is what he said to me. You got these dreams in your heart and you ain't sow nothing? Oof. He said, you got a dream in your heart and you haven't sown anything and I got this angle from two different perspectives um 
from a scriptural basis. So we're going to turn back to our, our word. God was teaching me both from the parable of the sower and the parable of the talents, okay? It was saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other, still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has words, I mean, whoever has ears, let them hear. The thing that God pointed to me about this scripture is that, like, too busy are we focused on where the seed is going to fall, and we're not thinking about the one that we're called to serve when we sow the seed. Multiple grounds in which, when the farmer throws out the seed, there's multiple grounds that the seed can be sown on. And because some of the other seeds like some of the other ground or some of the other soil the bird can eat it up right or the sun came up and the plant scorched it like we're so focused on that that we're not focusing on the fact that it says still other seed fell on good soil right where it produced crops 130 60 times right that was sown Stop focusing on the outcome. Your responsibility is not the outcome. Your responsibility is to sow. Like, your responsibility is not the outcome. Your responsibility is to sow. And this is eating me up. God is like, stop waiting on me until you sow a seed. Stop waiting on increase. Stop waiting on new opportunities. Stop waiting on a new relationship. Stop waiting on me to reveal. Stop. Stop waiting and start waiting. <laughs> stop waiting waiting and start serving like sow the seed sow it and there's a result for the ones who don't sow like there is a result because sowing a seed that god is giving you is literally obedience not sowing a seed that god gave you is disobedience um and that is along the journey has eaten me up this is meaty okay i'm over here advertising like note to self note to self wiki graphics and i'm eating myself up talking this out right now but anyway, so we're going to turn now to Matthew 25. Um, this is the parable of the talents, okay? So it says this. Again, it was like a man going on a journey, okay? Real raw, uncut okay, journey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, who called his servants and entrusted him his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another he gave two, and another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Um, the man who had received five bags went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the one who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold? See? I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, a good and faithful servant, okay? If you wait in, you're going to have to serve. The, the word is cooking on. You have gone, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. If you sow, you will receive. I, it says it here. I'm just reading the scripture. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, that good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with the few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Okay, so literally in the parable of the sower, right? It is there's a couple of grounds that it can fall on right and you we're too busy focusing on where the seed is going to be scattered that we're not focusing on the one that called us to sow the seed this is what the one with the one bag was thinking about he was thinking about himself and I have been eating up so bad about this so bad we are too busy thinking about how the un outcome is only going to benefit us that we're not thinking about the one that we're called to serve in the first place. 
And so he says, so I was afraid and went out and hid your gold, hid your gold, the gold that you gave me, hid the thing that you gave me, hid your gold. Oof. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not seen and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Whew. The little that you can do is just sow the seed. If you are in a space where you are waiting on God and you haven't, sown the seed because we're on the journey right now we learned that waiting without waiting is dead and how do we wait well the first thing that we do is serve and the way that we serve the one who called us is to sow the seed he's given us and if you haven't sown the seed that he has given you then there is no if ands or buts if you're supposed to be expecting something in return from what it is that you didn't sow if you haven't sown the seed, then you can't reap the harvest. That's just the tea. And this, I told y'all this was an accountability note to self. Is this has been the thing that has been eating me up. God is like, I don't care what the algorithm is. I don't care how you, how people say it's supposed to be done, what they say you're supposed to be doing. How they, I don't care how relationships look on Instagram. That's not what I called you to. I've given you a seed and I want you to sow the thing that I've given you. You're too busy focusing on the outcome, focusing on where the seed is going to be scattered, that you're missing the view of me. What if I'm waiting on you? What if I am the one that you're called to serve? And it has nothing to do with nothing else but the one that you're called to serve sow the seed and that challenged me so much in this season of my life like what if God is waiting on me what if what is happening right now what if posting this video is uh, a seed I don't know I'm just being obedient and it took me a long time to be obedient so I, I thank you Jesus for grace a little bit like so yeah how do you wait well? Well, number one, you serve, okay? You serve. Because waiting without waiting is what? Dead, okay? The second thing is you sow. Sow the seed that he has given you, okay? So that you don't become like the one who didn't sow in this parable of the talents. It's like, this is not done. Like, when you receive what God has given you, then your job is to steward it well. Um... And that was the last thing that God said. How do you wait well? You steward it. The last scripture I want to share with you guys um, in this note to self journey um, is in Genesis. Okay. Uh, Genesis 2 and 15. And I tell you, I like I said, this is the note to self. And so none of this I've mastered. I am literally just being eaten up. Um, but this challenged me a lot, okay? So you could turn your Bibles, we're going back to the scripture, okay? Uh, in Genesis 2 and 15, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And in another translation, it says to work it and to keep it. To work it and to keep it. To work it and to keep it. So when God gives you something, you're waiting on him like and he serves you the thing that when you sow and you receive the harvest or you get the thing that you've been waiting on whether it's that business or that relationship god is giving it to you to work it and to keep it to maintain it to steward it to do well by it um and i think sometimes like we are asking for things um because we just want them, but we don't want to take care of the things that God has given us. Um, and so sometimes God is like, well, I'm not going to give you something if you're not going to take care of it. Like, God is a good father. Okay, honey? Like, on some, like, if you are a grown person, if you have a little sister, brother, whatever, you have a plant. I don't know. <laughs> if you have something that you're taking care of, like, you're not going to give it something that it doesn't require for its growth and you're also not going to give something something 
uh, prematurely. And so maybe there's some things that you're waiting on God for um, because you haven't recognized how God is already waiting on you. Um, and that's the thing that I've been challenged by in this season. What if God is already waiting on me? What if he's already serving? What if I hadn't sat in his presence long enough to listen to see what he wants to say, to see how he wants the vision to be written down? What if I'm expecting something, but I hadn't even sown the seed yet? Like, what if I am not serving with a posture of servitude and just working the thing that is in front of me? Um, all of these things I have been incredibly challenged by in this season. And in this note to self, I really want you to take some time to consider some questions for yourself. Every time we do a note to self, we will end with some questions, okay? Questions that I have for our reflection point of a note to self is, in what ways is God already waiting on me? Question, write it down, sit with it. That's a hefty one, okay? But I want you to sit with it. Um, and write a note to yourself and then in what ways do i need to wait on god what ways do i need to serve the thing that he's already given me in what ways do i need to love what's already in my space um and i want you to guys to sit with that and just think about it and allow it to be something that resonates with you but these are the things that i've been challenged by a child okay so what if god is already waiting on you I want us to go from the posture of to, um, and yeah, that's my note to self. Mm -hmm.